Well, hello, hello, hello. This is your, I don't know what this is today. This is the episode of, okay, I know what I wanted to make. And I was inspired like you guys are, I mean, like all of us. We used to see stuff on um, on YouTube and we say, oh, I want to make that. And that was my moment. I saw a um, card actually that Amy R did and I really fell in love with the stamp. And I can't remember why at that moment. I think I was just not in the budget to go, you know, do a little bit more shopping. So I think about it and I thought about it and I think about it. And I came up with my solution to the problem of, oh, I want to make it, but I don't have the materials to do exactly, you know, or to go get that same stamp or whatever. So um, this is a car. Again, she did it with a stamp and it's a Simon Says stamp and it is still available, I do believe. So I'm going to link you in the description to that stamp and, and to Amy's video. But I did my take on it a little bit, uh, a little bit different. What I did literally is I took a totally different stamp. I took a, which is, I actually am using this stamp. You're not seeing because it's mounted in my, um, in my Misty right now. But this is from Colorado Craft. And it is a, a Christmas ball, obviously. And then I wanted it heart-shaped. And I didn't have a heart-shaped stamp. So what did I do? I made my own stencil. So I cut out a stencil, and I should have reached over and already had this handy, using one of the one of the hearts from my Fun Stampers Journeys heart. You guys have seen me use this incessantly, so I used this. So I'm going to show you, but that's what I did. And I had, I went as far as, you know, because um, you can get things fairly quickly from Amazon, is I laid my hands on a nice chunk of stencil, stencil mylar. So... I will go through here. I'm going to show you guys how I made this. But literally, I just ran this through my Gemini. I just cut down my piece of Mylar down. So I'm going to take you through what I what I'm, I my purpose in this video is to show you what's possible when you want to make something but you don't have the the materials handy to duplicate it. So it took a little thinking outside of the box, but I want to show you that, hey, it's possible, okay? And of course, I, uh, I inked it, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm kind of impressed with my own ink blending. I am not by any, you know, straight, you know, uh, stretch the imagination, the greatest blender. This is probably more the fact that the uh, Tim Holtz's Distress Oxides are amazing than it is any of my talent. So, um, but I did use two inks. It was Worn Lipstick and tattered rose are what brought you this background together I'm, and i'm kind of i'm i'm gonna say i'm proud of myself i'm like wow this is great yay i'm you know i'll be brave and do some more ink blending in the future because this worked out really really well so anyway let me stop chit chattering and i will come back with you and we're going to start putting this all together okay be right back Alrighty, i'm back with my handy dandy piece of stencil material again this is cut from the 12 by 12 sheets i got of uh, the stencil material from Amazon and I will link you down below to my source because it was a really good source and this is exactly the same quality as what you will buy from anybody but now you have the ability or at least now I have the ability of doing my own but I wanted to show you guys that I just experimented and hope in hopes that this little harebrained idea of mine would work and it actually did so I'm going to take I cut it down to six by six and I'm going to go ahead and use my glass mat to allow me to center it so let me grab my purple tape which is where is my purple tape where'd it go okay we're just gonna grab a piece here i always keep pieces hanging out there we go but i'm gonna tape it down really quick so that then i can center my die on it itself and i'm still i'm as i'm sitting here doing this i want you to know that i'm scanning my desk to see where the flip i put the purple tape that i had a second ago i swear i did but anyway, now I've got it set, you know, something halfway between my 6 and my 12, I think pretty well. Not perfectly, but okay, let me hang on. Let me pick that up because I did get a little sloppy here while I was scanning. That's what I get for scanning at the same time. Let me lift that one up for that one. Okay, let's do this again. Let me line it up better. Okay, now I'm a little happier with that. Okay, let me tape it down here and then I'm going to tape it down here. I mean, it really doesn't have to hold up to the zombie apocalypse just long enough for me to put my die down. So again, this is one of the dies from my set, from my FSJ set. And I'll also um, link you to the one, to this one in the description below. And and it's really easy for me. I just use the center, my, my since it's between uh, 6 and 12, I use my 9 o'clock or my nine, number 9. And I just line up the bottom and the, the right here 
the center of the heart. And then I know for a fact, because I already made the other one, it is an inch from the top and the bottom. Where's that little piece of tape right here? I'm going to snap off another little piece. Whoops. Let me do, okay, adjust it. Okay. And then I'm going to put it right there. I'm going to leave both pieces of the tape. I'm going to tape it down in two places. And I'll do it on the bottom here. There we go. So now I've got it in place. So now I can pick up these two paste um, pieces and I reuse this tape as much as I can. If you look at my arm here, what you cannot see the arm that's holding up my camera is it's like a cemetery of pieces of tape there. You know, it is, there's a ton of tape there just lining up the arm from what I use. Oh, I'll use that again. So then I stick it there and I do grab from that. So now I'm going to grab my plates from my Gemini. I'm, I'm still I'm really impressed that this plate has not snapped. We're just waiting. I mean, eventually it's going to. And I have to also remember tomorrow I'm going to get on and order a replacement plastic shim because it has. It's what I have found warps is mo the most is the plastic shim. So I'm going to change, I think, a bit of Jennifer's um instructions and I'm going to leave it open on one side to see if that avoids the warping of the shim because my plates it does really does help because look at this plate the one that's cracked it is cracked it's dying and that's only because I have straightened it by putting it in the oven at 200 degrees it does work and it has worked but I think this one I really really wanted it straight and I literally I overcooked it <laughs> for lack of a better term I did so the first time I ran it through after I did that, um, I cracked like that. But I've been using it now. Cracked like that easily about a month at least. It's been a month or two. And it's still going. So I will use this until it dies. And I'll let you guys know. But there it is. It is still faithfully cutting. Although maybe that's why now I have to do a second pass. Because it is compromised. So maybe I should just retire it. But there we go. This time, yep, on the second pass. So now, let me move this aside. Stash it right there. So now I can remove my, whoops, and a plate's about to go, it's gonna catapult itself to the floor. So here, let me help it, there we go. So now I have, not only do I have my heart, the heart itself, the, the stencil, which is what I was looking to do, but I also, technically speaking, I have the ma a mask. So let me just get the tape off because that's the one thing is this tape really, because of the pressure on the Gemini, it really sticks. It really now it's like, oh no, I'm, I'm part of the scenery now. I am part, I am, I am one with the stencil. But we are saying, yeah, no, you're not. You are a freeloader free and you must go. You are not part of the project. So let me just take a second to remove that, the pieces of tape. But there you go. So now I have a perfect heart, a heart stencil, and then a mask. I'm gonna, uh, I got it. Now here's the joke, guys. That I already made another one, and I was, I got this through, talked you guys all the way through it, and then realized I hadn't had the camera wasn't on. So here's the deal. I have two. I was going to give one of them away to the first commenter on this video, but now I have two. So number one and number two, first two people who comment on this video are going to get the, these little handy dandy stencils for me because I already have one. I already have it loaded into my um, stamping platform. So go ahead, give me a hi, tell me yay or what, or boo or whatever, But and, and I will contact you and I'll get these stencils out to you, okay? But what I've done, I want to show you, is I went ahead and loaded the one I already made into my Tim Holtz platform. I like this one better. So you see I have my stamp here on the lid and this is my Colorado Craft Christmas and it's the Christmas ornament because it's big and it had the patterning I wanted. And then I just taped my this down, down to the side with the paper tape that I got from Daiso, which is pretty darn, also pretty darn toot and sticky. Now, what I'm going to do is I already cut my cardstock right here, and I cut it bigger than A2, so I think I cut this five and a half by six, I believe, and then I'll trim it down. But all I want is for this to, I just line it up to the bottom, and I abut it to the edge of the tape. 
and that's where I want it to lie. That's where I want my card. So that leaves this opening. This is the part that's going to, all of the rest of the stencil, quite frankly, is kind of sticky and icky. But this will now, even though it'll overlap, but I will now stamp with my embossing powder. And it's going to take several tries. That's why I realize, and I'm not sure why it is, and I think it might be just the elevation of it. But let me get my, where did I put my ink? I know I buried it here. It's like a hot mess. There we go. Clear pigment ink. But all I got to go and do now is just really load this up, you know, really juicy because it will take. That's the one thing I realized. And that's because I'm cheating because if this were stamped, it's a non-issue. But I'm not, I'm cheating to get a heart shape out of a non heart shape die or, or stamp so you know i'm kind of putting a square you know a square pig in a round hole for lack of a better term because i said well i don't have that pretty little stamp so we're going to make do so so you can see it's still i had a heck of a time so and maybe i just need to make this juicy or i need to press down on it a little bit harder so we'll see but i did have to stamp it a few times to get good coverage and i'm assuming because the the needless to say the stencil itself has great coverage it has all kinds of ink stuck to it but that's not where i want it i want it on my paper so and this one because i'm stubborn because really i should just go and buy the darn stamp but you know what happens if somebody watches this video you know five five years from now and that stamp is no longer available well here now i have given you the fix and this is true for anything you say out there that you could be adapt in this method I, I'm just giving you a possibility of what to do because I'm all about buying that stamp. Quite frankly, I think it's beautiful. <laughs> but, and I'll be able to now. But I, I, it made me think in the moment. So I've had this percolating in my head for probably since I saw the video, probably a week or two. And I finally have, you know, you know, got around to getting it. Well, first I had to get the stencil material, which is really inexpensive. Not that expensive at all, in my opinion. So let's see. Let me pull it up and let me take a see, let me take a gander. It looks pretty good. I'm gonna anyway. I'm just for the sake of argument. I'm gonna hit it one more time. You know, just you know, in this one case, more is better because I want it to emboss. So I'm just gonna hit it one last time, and then we're gonna move on, and we're going to stamp this cardstock, and I'm going to be stamping it with white embossing powder. Because then I'm going to ink over it. Normally I would go backwards, but I, I I went ahead and experimented, and it did work. It worked just fine. So I said, okay, if it worked once, it'll work twice. In theory, but I wasn't doing it the first time on camera, so who knows? <laughs> I'll there now. Whoops, hang on. There we go. Lift that up. I'm gonna pull my piece of cardstock. And I'm gonna set this aside over here. And hopefully it won't catapult itself. But let me grab my embossing powder. Let me grab my tray. Where is it? There it is. It's right hiding right in front of me. So I'm going to grab my little lovely little tray. And I'm just using, you know, a Ranger white embossing powder. Until, and I, there's all kinds of others. So, and I probably will acquire them just to see it, just to do my own little comparison. But this is what I had handy. So we use what we got. see and can you see that uh, it's, it's a really good I mean you look at it right now and it almost has like a velvety look to it now I'm going to go ahead and grab my heat tool which is going to reel it in because it's down on the floor I already see that I went a little bit off the edge here I'm not happy with that but that's okay because I can just fix it by trimming it that is a solve that is very solvable so let me just go, okay, I just heated it up for a second. I should have done this off camera before I started. But now all I have to do, there we go, it's turning. I love, I'm fascinated by emboss, the magic of embossing powder and how pretty it looks when it becomes what I want it to, to be. And there we go, and I see a little spot there, which I should have really hit it with the buddy, and I didn't because I'm a dweeb. But that's okay. Yeah, again, remember always, it is the beauty of a handcrafted item. But there we go. Oh, 
Alrighty. Oh, stop. So hopefully you can see that now I have, you can see the shiny against the cardstock, but now I am ready to go ahead and tape this down and ink. So give me a second, I'll set that up. Alrighty, I am back. I'm ready to ink up my lovely panel, but I'm gonna do a little trick. I mean, that's a, probably a earth shattering trick, but it's one I saw, saw done. And that is I'm gonna take my panel, I'm angling it more to the direction, kind of how I like to work. But I am going to go ahead and lay tape down on the top. Tape it. I'm going to tape it literally right down to my mat. And I've given myself that to my... Let me hang on. Let me take a little bit. Although I've cut plenty of room in this, I cut my panel way bigger than I needed it because I planned on doing this. But if I tape it down to my mat, I don't have to worry about, you know, holding it in place, getting my fingers in the ink, getting fingerprints on my image. None of that. None of that happens just by doing this little simple quick trick, which is just taping it down. I saw it taped down on all four sides. I think I can get away with just taping it top and bottom. But, and mostly I'm going to try to get away with that because I have no clue where my per the roll of purple tape roll literally rolled off to. I'm not sure if it rolled off somewhere or Elvis stole it. And it could be one or the other. <laughs> He's a guilty of parties any. But I'm ready now. I'm gonna grab my Distress Oxides. I have both my worn lipstick and my tattered rose. So I'm going to go ahead and just ink this up and do my ink blending real quick. didn't take that long but I'm also going to blow away the little flu-flus I seem to have I'm going to tell you the honest truth on some of these I think I ended up getting the daubers I'm pretty I know I did um from Hobby Lobby because you can get them with a 40% off coupon while you still can but I realized the foams off the Hobby Lobby ones come apart if you look at that pink one look at that there's little divots already coming out so if you're going to do that just because you want to have more of the of these daubers like I do Go ahead and buy them. They're all great because wood is wood and it works just fine. Just toss, the, go ahead and just do yourself a favor and probably just toss the foams or just understand that they're not going to last as long and you're going to be tossing them. Anyway, so, okay, I've not got my panel all colored up and it's a, and the blending would just perfect, you know, work perfectly like I wanted it to because that is all about Tim Holtz's distressed oxides and nothing with the fact that I have any clue about what I'm doing. <laughs> but now I'm going to go ahead, before I lift up the panel, I'm going to buff buff up the embossing to bring it back to life look at that see how pretty that is and that just means i just buff it up buff up and there you go now it is brought back to life beautiful white panel and then i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to grab my heat tool out of the bin whoops sorry about that but i want a heat set and sorry, and you see my fat head. Oh, for goodness gracious. Let's do this. There you go. And I'm going to go ahead and heat set my ink so I can continue to work on it and not smear it or turn my pink my fingers pink, which is okay. But this is a, this is a shade I love. I think worn lipstick is my favorite shade of pink that Tim Holtz although I haven't got Kitschy Flamingo yet and I'm going to try to go and acquire that this weekend I'm going to call Frank Garcia Studios because I live really close to there and probably you know hike over there on Saturday 
and if they have it in stock because they I got the email I'm going to go ahead and pick that up because that will get me I'm only short about six uh, of the Tim Holtz colors to have them all and at this point it's just as easy for me to go to a store and give them some business and then then um, because I'm going to spend the money whether it's in gas or it's in shipping. But now, there I am. I've got my panel all ready. And it turned out really, really pretty. I am really happy. Not I think I'm the end-all be-all. I don't. But I'm really happy with how it turned out. And, you know, just with the whole, you know, I was able to pull off more or less, not perfectly, but I do like it. And I was concerned about not having like the pretty little edges or anything, but it worked out fine. It's, it's still a heart. It's a little misshapen here, but I'll take care of that by trimming it off. And it's not so much the die as of the way the pattern was. So yeah. I'm going to go ahead and I notice it, but you know, a per, you know, the normal person might not notice it, but I'm going to go ahead. Now I've got to trim down, <clears throat> trim my panel down till it's four and a quarter by eight and a half. So I'm gonna start by, whoops, let's not do that. I am gonna trim off a bit of the heart. So looking at mine, I trimmed it off to about that edge. Let's see, whoops, hello Meyer. Wow, did you guys hear that? You know, I don't know if you could pick that up, but someone just decided to treat our street like a drag racing strip <laughs> oh my goodness so i'm going to take a little bit more off because i still have just because i want it the the lopsidedness kind of started to not be so noticeable okay i can live with that and then now i gotta take it over and make this four and a quarter right do i want to leave it like that does that look okay what do you guys think Am I being crazy? I'm going to take a little trim, just a little tiny bit more off. There we go. Okay, now let's make this over four and a quarter. Trim the rest off to fit my card base. And then I'm going to trim minimal off here because what I want to do a little different than I did on my other card, on my original sample, was to give myself more space for the sentiment. I don't know how much, how well I accomplished that right now. I still seem to have cut off a lot. I should have just barely, barely, barely. But that should now bring it down to four and a quarter by five and a half. Put that away there. Let me pick up all my little strippy pieces. Go away. Alrighty, now we're going to, I have already my card base ready that I made. Are you guys not proud of me? Grab my heavyweight cardstock, white cardstock. Let me just burnish that fold really well because I have a box of envelopes. I think they're Darice envelopes that I got at the expo from a card swap. So I, I might as well use these suckers. And that should be, now let's see, let's check the measurement. Yep beautiful it's perfect so now let's tape it out real quick chop chop let's get cracking because i have to as soon as i'm doing oops hang on oh look isn't that something i found a cat hair <laughs> you guys know actually i think this is a myra hair <laughs> i think i should oh so now well it's interesting you know because i am um, at the end of the day i too am a cat and i think that's why i have an affinity to cats but my maiden name before you know and again my family comes from cuba that's where my descendants is but my maiden name was hidalgo gato and my name comes back from the middle ages from the time of the crusades so it means in literal translation hidalgo is hijo de alguien it's a because they're a king back when the time of the crusades said anybody that comes with me to the crusades will be give this title of nobility and he will be the son of somebody no you know no big deal not a lot you know whatever they the spoils of war but they brought back that title and they could it would be tax-free so anyway so i am in hidalgo and then gato so i am for lack of a better term i was a the daughter of a noble cat <laughs> so there you go and my father when he was still alive he too loved cats and he called them my people. He would say, they are my people. Which is why we had so many cats. He would bring a stray home every time I turned around. Because he lived with me the last years of his life. 
and we are not going to tell you exactly how many cats ultimately I ended up with before he passed. But let us just say that I have a friend who says that um, double digits is crazy cat lady status, and I was there. <laughs> <laughs> not any longer now i have a normal number of two okay there you go so now i've got my card base all done so i am ready now to do the sense of it but i want to experiment because before i did this i experimented on my ink blending and i blended up this piece of paper i want to see what i'm going to cut out this my sentiment this sentiment out of this paper and see how it looks guys so give me a second because now i've got to figure out where i put that sentiment went ahead and i did cut out my sentiment out of the piece of tester paper that I did to do the to test out the ink blending just to practice it and I like it it is not maybe standing out as much as I might want to but it works it coordinates maybe it's too matchy matchy for your taste so you know it's up to you guys I just this is what I ended up doing and I did here interestingly enough the my this here is a little bit more pink more peachier than my original one because what I know I ended up doing was playing more when I was blending into the warm into the warm um excuse me the worn lipstick so I'm not unhappy with either looks of it I think both work but I'm gonna tell you this is what happened is I played more here than I did here I got the blend quicker so I didn't go in into the warm because that's what I did I, I went into the worn lipstick so I brought it back out into the tattered what was it it's tattered rose so I am ready. I'm going to go ahead and adhere this down. Under normal circumstances, I would stack this. I'd cut three of them or two more and stack it. But this, I tried it. This puppy is so delicate and it is really a pill to line up just because it's so delicate. And it can't be done, but I ended up with glue on my hands and I was just not out happy. So this one time I'm going to, you know, not, you know, you know, it, it, rein in my impulses and I'm just going to do the single layer. I don't know that anybody's not going to like it, but if you guys want to, you use a different sentiment by all means use, um, go ahead and pop it out a couple, cut a couple and just stack it up so that it adds a little dimension. That is what I normally do. So I'm going to grab my little barely art glue, which is my favorite, and I'm going to go in and just run and just just tap it down into the glue so that it picks it up i'm going to run it around a little bit let me get it up here make sure that all of these and i use my tweezers just so that i can minimally i don't want to get it the glue on my fingers so then i can press it down and not have the sentiment get stuck to my hand not that that is, of course never happened to me <laughs> right go ahead meyer you could you just need that and then let me, I mean, I'm going to look at it this way just to make sure it is straight. Because I always knew it was going to overlap into. Let's see, it immediately. So I want to get it down to the bottom so it covers minimally possible. So I'm sorry I'm, I'm fa facing this to me to make sure it is straight. But there, I am committed. And there you go. I've got my lovely, lovely little card. There's a part of me, hmm. I wonder where is what do you guys think I have a let me I have a feeling I have a feeling where are my little punches let's see what happens if I punch out using the back side of this because I tested on both sides because practice makes perfect there's a part of me that wants to add a couple little hearts in the top oh my gosh this the one thing I'm about to say is this puppy these are my little lovely little punches I got at Daiso it is a kind of stiff Okay, not kind of. It's a lot stiff. <laughs> There's no way. I've been just doing it literally the entire time. I've been punching a bunch of these hearts. I just do it this way. And that way I see where I'm... Because I'm a, I'm a paper miser like the rest of us, so I'm trying to get out the most hearts I can. So let's see. Part of me that wants to add some hearts. So let me see if I'm not overplaying my hand. I just do... Get to come here. Oh my goodness. Part of me just wants to scatter some little hearts there. And look, I can put one down here. What do you guys think? I think that actually works. Just to add that little, you know, little bit extra because, you know, I, I cannot, I have a compulsion for not leaving well enough alone. But if when you're going to do this, you always work in threes. If you're going, this is what you're going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and put those in. Good, bad, or otherwise. I am committing.
put a drop there and let's, I'm using the big bottle so I got to be really careful about that drop. I'm going to cattywampus it a little bit more. I don't know if you guys heard that but that's Bo who is restless right now. And that was him flopping his ears. He's looking at me right now. It's so cute. He's a basset hound when he wiggles his butt. He's wiggling, you know, he's wagging his tail. But it's like the whole back end of his body wiggles. It's hilarious to look. He's so cute. And he knows how to work it. But it is breakfast time for him. So I mean, he's looking at me like, hello, mother. I don't care what it is that you want to be doing, but I'm hungry. So come on, get cracking. You've had your coffee already. Hang on, but wait. But okay, there you go. I will go back in and I am going to stamp my sentiment. I stamped one and I'll show you on this one. So I just put here my just to say. And then on the inside, I'm here for you for you today and always. And I may change it because this is straight from my stamp set. Let me see if it's right here. I should have it handy. That's what I'm supposed to do is keep everything handy. So, oh, crud. I moved it. But I did use the stamps from my Caring Thoughts collection that I got from HSN so there's another one in there so I can make this so this will be either it could be again it lends itself to being a Valentine or just a care you know just a you know a pick-me-up card so there you have it here's my take today this is my Valentine or my card for the day uh, don't get used to this it's been like it's actually believe it or not it's been kind of stressful trying to get these out every day because I do work a full-time job and I have a life I do do laundry on occasion things like that nature sleep once in a while <laughs> but anyway I hope that you learn something from this and you learn to you know to think outside of the box to when you don't have what you need use what you've got okay guys so if you like this please give me a thumbs up remember the first two people who comment are going to get I'm going to send them these stents of the stencil and the mask that I made. My little Myra original. Oh, <laughs> how exciting. And if you want to see more videos from me, then please, by all means, subscribe and ding the bell so you know when I'm back on. Otherwise, just take care of yourselves. Have a great weekend. Go forth and be creative. And don't forget, we're all a little mad here, so scrap the madness, okay? I'm going to talk to you later. Bye.